Hey, Paul. Hey, Matt. Hey, Chris. Welcome, everybody, to Building Up To It, a LEGO fan podcast. This is episode number one. Thanks for joining us on our first episode. And we got a lot of stuff to talk about tonight, today, yeah. or whenever you're watching this. It's going to be a good time. <laughs> so we're setting out to do something new with a LEGO podcast and a fresh take on something that everybody's talking about all the time anyway. Maybe we'll come up with some new insightful ways to discuss it. We have a, a strong docket tonight, but we got to get something out of the way first, and that is our intros, because this is the first episode. You don't know who we are. You might know who I am. I don't you don't know, know who those other two guys. We'll get into that, though. I'm Chris. I'm Bricks on the Dollar. You can call me Clutch. I'm an explorer of many different projects and adventures and business. And I, I got this, but we'll talk about that. What else? You already know who I am. That's okay. Um, I think you need to meet my co-host, though. Paul's here. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Paul, and uh, I am. I come at this from the angle of someone who loves children's toys. So I am a big collector of things like Transformers and big transformable robots in general. Obviously, Lego. I'm a big fan of Lego bricks and sets and anything that interconnects. And so I am very excited to be a part of this podcast. Um, I picked up a couple things myself uh, over the past few days. Um, and if you wouldn't mind, I will do just a quick screen share so you guys can kind of see what it is that I'm, that I'm going with here. I have been very fortunate. Let me know when you guys can see what I've got. Oh, it's here. beautiful. You're good. Look at that. Yeah. So this was my, uh, one of my, Bricktober hauls, I suppose. Um, got a couple Christmas sets from the Lego store. Um, the most recent architecture set that I still need. I'm a big fan of the Speed Champions line just because I think the cars look pretty cool, even though from what I've heard, they're not particularly accurate to how the vehicles look, but they do have a good enough idea in the design there. Um, I mean, how accurate could they be? <laughs> They're not, to, they're not G1, and they're not cartoon accurate. <laughs> exactly. From, <laughs> from true car and racing enthusiasts, I've heard they're not that good, but I can't tell. So I think they look cool on the shelf together. Um, big Star Wars fan. So when the Bounty Hunter pack came out, I was very excited to pick that one up too. And uh, most recently, I was able to pick up, uh, after seeing the uh, Ninjago movie the other day, I picked up the Fire Mech this past weekend. And I uh, was very excited to build that guy because obviously uh, the red sets are the ones that do it for me. And uh, <laughs> we're, we're your, um, your centerpiece on the table works so well behind Yeah, that. it looks like an explosion. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I think those are supposed to be like poppies or something like that. I don't know. That was at my sister's house. <laughs> you funny. brought Lego to your sister's house? Well, I, A I, lot I, of it brought too. My I brought my nephew to see the movie with me. And uh, so okay. after that, we went to... Uh, we did a little toy hunting, and uh, we're <laughs> excited enough to see that uh, we found this set on sale. The, the Fire Mech set was on sale at Walmart, so I picked it up at a good price. And but you definitely it. brought, unless those other two sets are your nephews, you definitely brought them with you with this intention in mind. <laughs> it, it he was, keeps those I, in I his glove box. <laughs> I had it in the back of my head. I, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> and uh, I do enjoy that Fire Mech set quite a bit. I, I'm hoping to find a mod somewhere to give him some knee articulation because I think that's the he, only thing that it's really He has fun. false knees. Like no he, has, he, he has gears and what looks like... Pistons is, in the back, too. Yeah, it's supposed to. it looks like it's supposed to have knees, but it doesn't. So. It does not, and I was a little disappointed in that, but I think that can be easily modded. Uh, certainly, there's probably some tutorial online or some instructions online to actually do that but uh, in all honesty i think he looks good on the shelf as is if i really want to play with it i need some knees that's that's what i figure and is your favorite ninja turtle Raphael? he is indeed oh, there you go <laughs> <laughs> well that guy's a party dude so i can't argue with that so, <laughs> <laughs> so that is all i've gotten as far as uh, actual buildable wow. sets are concerned so i will pass this now over to matt matt how about you all right. Hey, uh, my name is Matt. I am a uh, not new Lego collector. I sort of got into Lego over the last few years. 
sort of diving into the the city line building a lego city like every other guy on earth I'm card, <laughs> unlike chris i'm a card carrying vip member ah no, that's not a real vip card it's the uh, vip set uh i also collect transformers uh horror movies vinyl records comic books enamel pins mighty max you know I, i'm a man child with uh more money than a child. Those are those don't work. We know it. Two of them. <laughs> Two of them. We know Two. those don't work. <laughs> and uh, yeah, as for uh, my recent haulage, uh, I haven't been building a lot lately because I've been quite busy over the last little while. Uh, but it has been Bricktober, so I've been slinging cash out. Um, this was my week one Bricktober haul. I actually had just bought the Ninja Go sets to get the. Uh, the minifigure set and then I also had separately grabbed some uh, Spider-Man bridge sets on sale so that I can combine them to make a proper bridge into my city and then uh, on Kijiji I actually found a big lot of Lego and got the Grand Emporium which we all know is retired so I was happy to get that for my my Lego city. It's a real Grand Emporium right? Oh yeah it's legit. Yeah, it is None a... that knockoff crap. Uh, and then <laughs> uh, week two Week two, I'm, I'm into the Batman line of minifigures, so I grabbed uh, these sets so I could get the Bane and the Mutant Leader and Calendar Man, which I think is the most hilarious minifigure. Uh, <laughs> in the running with that polka dot guy, which I literally just bought on Bricklink today. Nice. Uh, week three, I did a big order on the Lego shop and got the uh, Batcave, the classic Batcave, which was on sale, and I got all these holiday sets, and I also got the city set, and of course, I got a free Lloyd minifigure and a free Caveman minifigure set and a free VIP set because I spent all this money. And then and I Arab Trooper too. That uh, yeah yeah. And then I hit a uh, Toys R Us and got a bunch more minifigures so I could get the Week Three set. And then Week Four came around and I grabbed the bus and some streets just to get the last minifigure set. And strangely enough, if you see here, Toys R Us Canada. Uh, confession i'm canadian um <laughs> they for some reason out. want to use this subpar photo for some social media purpose uh so whatever you know their prerogative really but yeah that's uh pretty much it for me You're gonna be okay well then i'll uh in canada since i forgot to do a little a little tiny screen sharing because i assumed you all knew who i was I'll, I'll show you the little thing I had cooked up for for this. Oh. That is, <laughs> I I got a few things. I got the Elemental Masters pack, the three pack from um somebody picked it up for me at another Lego store because I feel like the ones near me haven't had this in a while. Right. This was cool. It came out well after that season of Ninjago was over, and I don't know if you guys watched the TV show, but. I catch it on Netflix, which is like two seasons behind. That's I don't go out of my way to watch That's it. That's the Netflix way. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this this is a cool uh, season because every season they reinvent themselves, and this season was like a battle royale on this island, and all the different elemental masters from the world were there, and these three, uh, two of which were never produced as figures in sets, these three are all came in on one of those blister card packs that are only at the Lego store and sometimes Toys R Us. And I wanted to get these and I, I want to hunt down whatever other ones were made as well as maybe piecing together other characters from that season based on the best available parts. Yeah, so I mean, that's... if you get some emo hair, you can obviously get that that, <laughs> that guy in the middle. And <laughs> <laughs> Do you right think... Were there other elemental masters in that line, or is it just those three? Kind of is that is that so? So Skylar on the left was in <laughs> one set, and she's also in this blister pack with a different suit. Um, there's a shade here, I think his name is. I forget. And then uh, he's not um, Smoke from Mortal Kombat. And this, no, no, this this, this series uh, wasn't ripping off Mortal Kombat by having martial artists fight on an island in any way. <laughs> I mean, that's. I feel like that goes farther back than, than Mortal Kombat, even. But but uh, Shade is here, and then uh, Ash, the master of smoke. I think Shade is just the master of shade. Right. <laughs> um, 
and not the not the the new term, not the new kind of shade, the old <laughs> kind of shade. shade. <laughs> He's not. He doesn't throw shade. He just prefers when the sun isn't directly on him, just like me. <laughs> um, so there's these three, and then there was there was two other elemental masters that were just kind of extras in two of the sets from that wave. That being a uh, Griffin Turner, who's the master of speed. <laughs> And, <laughs> the names, I'm sorry. <laughs> and um, the other one is uh, Karloff, the master of metal. He's is in he one Russian? Of... Yes, he is. Rest... Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> so th- those are the five that are available. And then two of the characters from that season were just Ultra Agents villains that they used again. <laughs> so to- Toxikita and Invisible are two Ultra Agents figures, which are now older than any of these figures because... I mean, that's just the Lego right. Cinematic Universe, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the LCU is strong. The, uh, the LCU is strong, and there's like strong consistencies throughout. You'll see things, yeah. You do, we you all really saw the do. Lego movie. You, yeah. And then, um, so I, I'm going to have to hunt down those two from Ninjago and the two from Ultra Agents, and I'll probably go ahead and get all the, the five or four or six, however many ninja there are, from that that season two because they're all they were all in the competition as well so that's that and then anything beyond that i have to piece together based on looking at the animation and being okay do those parts anywhere near exist sometimes they won't i don't know it sounds like a fun collection yeah and then eventually i'll sell it i'm sure um (laughs) i got all set for two thousand dollars yes two thousand i got maybe three thousand i got the detective's office from a buddy of mine um it's the box is open but everything inside is sealed still it was uh it was 100 bucks which is a great deal come on it is. that's a steal yeah. it's an awesome set yeah yeah so i i never built one of the modulars before so this will be fun for me that that and, set actually has some pretty cool playability to it being yeah, the, the whole, detective's the, office the, you yeah, know yeah the whole the cookie drug heist thing, yeah i whatever. guess he's trying to find where the cookies are i mean i guess it's for kids but okay, it's, a, it's the lego version of a speakeasy right yeah. so it's, it's pretty awesome yeah yeah don't you and, know cookies are illegal in lego city <laughs> I told you you could eat my cookies the cookie prohibition yeah <laughs> so, so i uh i only really like the architectural style on the set the modulars from this forward i I don't really care for the early 1900s style of everything that came before that i like this one i like the brick bank and i like yeah. the uh, assembly square a bit more modern yeah they're a little, I, I i'm no um architect but they they're different than the previous ones and i like this style better so if i were to have a street like everybody else does a street with all these in a row I would only do this one forward, which is also the cheapest option. Yeah, well, sure of is. course. Yeah, I got uh, I got a, a Grand Emporium pretty cheap, but uh, just seeing how like empty it is inside compared to some of the newer sets, I don't think I'm going back further from that because I just feel the build quality isn't as nice on the those older expert sets. And maybe I'm wrong, but I just from what I see ahead of that, they're just they're spot on. You know, they're really nice. I've got so, all of them, and and I'll agree with you. Like the the early ones, particularly like the uh, the cafe corner and uh, Market Street. Don't I don't the cafe corner has nothing inside, and Market Street has just got a little bit inside. Um, you definitely need to fill those out with some some yeah. mock pieces. So what's the best? So when you're you're picking up a set for five hundred bucks after market, you're not looking to fill that out with more bricks. You can find a cafe <laughs> corner for five hundred bucks. Go for it, because even that's cheap. No thanks. <laughs> So I'm I'm gonna build this one with my girlfriend and get the experience of building the modular, and I'm I'm not gonna be able to find the two after this for a steal like this, and I don't really want to have a street set up, so I'll probably wind up selling this for like 125 or so. Yeah. And I mean, it's gonna sound like heretical, but uh. I, I'm okay with getting the experience of building this and then selling it and making a little bit of money and having been able to build it. Just yeah, just for the fun of building it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that... I bought it, I built it, I had fun, I sold it, I made twenty bucks. Moving on. But if you don't have fun building it, you have to tell us. You got to be honest. I'm sure I, I'm not going <laughs> to flip it immediately after it's done being built. So I'll probably show this off whenever it 
does get right completed. On. There you go. And then you have to tell you have to tell us your favorite play feature in it because there are a lot, like Matt said. I will. I will. Yeah. Um, I found this in some old instructions, and I thought this was great because you know how they have like the don't don't shoot your eye out, and they have like the don't don't pour all your Lego into the shag carpeting, and yeah. they have um, don't shoot the cat. Yeah, don't. Uh, they used to be really adamant about not putting too much pressure on Technic pieces. It right. might still be in the instructions. I don't know. I haven't built Technic in a while, but to me, this looks way too close to that Drake meme. Yeah, you, you know the no, one. Man, no. yeah. You know the one. No. Yeah. Well, it's this almost looks... not saying don't do this. It's just sort of saying like you're gonna sweat. <laughs> <laughs> or, or like angrily cry. I don't know. It's like, it's good. It's, it's nice. they, they even like, like they have bent the the square brick. Like they, it's not just the the one long piece. Yeah, they bent the other brick too. <laughs> it's like right now. yeah, it's actually convexing a square brick <laughs> outward. That's insane. I think so it's this, saying, like if you push too hard, you're gonna have a bad time. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's so that Drake meme. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> but this this is from a set of instructions from about 1997. Right. This is they from weren't big on graphic design in 97 yet. No, this is they, like they hadn't figured out it's how to change the world. Yeah, the uh, the CEO drew this <laughs> <laughs> on a napkin. He said, "Use this," and they took him literally, and they just like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, this is um this is from the Twisted Time Train from Time Twisters slash Time Cruisers which is a great theme. Maybe it's we'll talk about that eventually. Um, and this is supposed to be the, uh, the pulley wheel with a rubber tire on it, on an axle going through like a one by 10 oh, technique okay. brick. So that's, that's the pulley wheel right there in, in brown. That's why it's got that brown. You're going to want those to be straight too. I mean, mechanically. <laughs> They're wheels, yeah. <laughs> um, right. Yeah. And it doesn't even, it's, it doesn't even add up all the way. Like there is in fact, a half a brick, half a stud, extra axle on both sides of this the vehicle, where they don't they don't cap it off or anything. So mm -hmm. there's just more axle than you need. So it's kind of kind of strange. Well, I mean, if you're gonna do some Mad Max shit, you're gonna want like a spike axle. <laughs> yeah, so that that's a really awesome graphic that I found. And uh, the last thing I have is what I've been doing the last two days. I've been putting together Great. all these parts for. Uh, these two kits that I'm producing for Carter Industries. I have the first one available in my store right now, but then number two and number three are coming out in quick succession after that. And so I've been spending time pulling all these parts out of my store, pulling them out of bulk bins, like getting the part, getting all the parts that I can before placing BrickLink orders to for the rest of them. So probably tomorrow I'll get to the point where I have to order what parts I just don't have. Oh yeah, but, and so uh, I, I did get the third clutches secret stash as well as the first two. So I did, in fact, in there get one of the Carter Industries uh, mech builds, which I thought was pretty rad. Little figure there, it's cool. That's awesome. As a as a, I don't know, a Lego seller distributor of of, of of loose pieces, does it make you mad when you have to actually order more pieces that you don't actually have all the ones in your store right now? <laughs> Um, it, that doesn't make me mad. The part that makes me mad is that I'm sure I've had more than enough of all of these pieces that I need in my store over time. But the fact that things keep selling means at any given time, I don't have it all. <laughs> like I'll go and I'll pull what I have of one of these parts and I'll, I'll remember like that used to be a shoebox, and now they sold out and now I've started over with a small drawer of them. And like, if I had known, I wouldn't have sold them. <laughs> Damn kids wanting their Lego bricks. Yeah. Yeah, but that's that. Um, so those are our intros. We probably won't take that long for intros going forward, but we're all going to talk to you about what we are doing in our Lego worlds each, each episode really briefly. The next thing we want to do is a spotlight that we will do from time to time or maybe every week we don't know yet but we're going to pick a builder out there and i'm going to go first and i think matt and paul are going to pick builders in the future and we'll keep rotating but this is just a shout out 
basically, unsolicited. And I talked about this last week. Oh, got a screen share. Shouldn't have stopped screen sharing, maybe. But I want to talk about Charm City Brick. Look at that guy. What a gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> lucky bastard. <laughs> so uh, Charm lucky City bastard Brick if you is, like in, uh, is in Maryland. He lives down there, and I've met him a few times at conventions. He's planning a big display at Philly Brick Fest in April. And this is him, obviously, on was that mid-September when the Falcon came out? September 1, it looks like. Oh, it does look like that. Look, it's oh. as if they date stamp it. They must have it. I'm surprised it doesn't say, like, five weeks ago like it used to. Yeah, that's, that's an unhelpful, idea. Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a good unit of measure. Anyway, yeah. he is wearing a Brick Swag shirt that I, I designed. One that not everybody liked because it was way too niche because I designed it. It's of uh, King Kahuka's mask from Islanders. You probably never heard of it. You probably never heard of it. It's, it's just the the best villains, the best neutral faction to the pirates that ever existed. No doubt. No big no doubt, deal. No doubt. <laughs> um, that's him. You can check him out. On, this is Instagram, so you can go find him on Instagram. It's Charm City Brick. I've got four photos. Here's a building that I actually oh. saw in person in Virginia at Brick Fair in August. I love that Angel Warrior minifigure from a couple series ago. That's a really cool one. It's put that, into good use. That's um, that's the helmet stunning. though is aftermarket, I believe. I don't think they had a winged helmet. No, I think you're right. Ooh, I think um, grumpy. There's so many things to look at, and you guys definitely call things out as you see them, like the um, the weird engine piece in dark orange from the. 30th anniversary edition Millennium Falcon oh, geez. is up here. I see these cool globes on the pillars. That That's pretty nice little that's, feature there. Yep, the Pirates of the Caribbean globes just popped up there. And a nice use of the sand-colored uh, palm leaves, the palm fronds, as you will, adorning mm. the side of the building. That's, that's pretty rad. And this is just really simply nice. the product of sand green being put on pick-a-brick walls around the country, and especially in New York City, that people are able to do this nowadays, which they never really were able to do before. Hmm. And these plants down here are made out of the old dragon wings and black, or oh, maybe, yes. maybe dark green. I was going to ask about that. Like, There's just a, a lot of very creative uses of, of things that I have not seen before. Yeah, that's it's rad. That. The, 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 just the color combination is is very striking and stunning. He he does a lot of very interestingly shaped buildings. He pulls a lot of inspiration from from uh, architecture from around the world, and he puts on a whole town slash city setup at conventions, and it's really nice to see all these buildings. I think it's especially cool that he gets a chance to completely redo his like town plan. Every time he does a convention, they don't always have to be in the same orientation. He can set up the streets however he wants. And that's something where a regular city builder who never takes it anywhere might not actually get the chance to do because they they keep adding on instead of starting over every yeah. time. And I'd actually imagine that you, you might not get the exact same dimensions for display space each time. So this is this obviously benefits him to be able to move things around, but that can also be limiting to people who are at those shows too, I'd, I'd bet. Yeah. And then the next photo Ooh, is uh, this one, garden. which shows uh, some of his trees as well as a, a squ uh, like a park square. Yeah, so um, you were saying like this this p photo in particular is really rad because you don't see anything beyond his his Lego city. It looks like you're uh, immersed in it. Definitely, this is um, this is the actual. So he doesn't brick build his roads. He uses the actual Lego base plates. He does do the tiled sidewalks like a lot of people do, but uh, I've seen some very nice things done where you actually brick build the roads uh, on their side with uh, bricks and tiles and plates, and it's very good it's very superior to um just using the actual base plates but hey we can't all afford like a a 50 dollars in parts 
for uh, one piece of road, road when, yeah. when road's available. What uh, what you don't see in this picture is that this is his like triple brick bank right here. Oh, nice. So that's that's about half of it, and I think it goes up higher than this too. And immediately behind it is like Smoky I don't know, like hotel a hotel, story friends colored hotel. So that nice. one's tall. It's much taller than this building. Yeah, and, and the, uh, you know the cool thing about those Lego friend sets is you get some nice, cool color bricks you don't normally yeah. see, like these weird lavenders and uh, purples and whatnot. You don't get a lot of in the other sets. I just bought a ton of friends Lego on uh, Kijiji just because they have great colors in them. You know, a lot of green as well. Yeah, and I had a really awesome uh, kid come into my store the other day, and he was. He he looked through every set in there. He didn't not look at the friend sets, and he treated every set equally, as yeah. if there, there weren't any good sets and bad sets or sets. And there that wasn't were there wasn't perfect. boy boy Lego and girl Lego. And, oh yeah, he yeah, he yeah. doesn't see that divide because he's building a town, he's building a city. He wanted a swimming pool, so he's like, oh, I'm gonna get the friend swimming pool because there's a swimming pool for my city. Yeah, he doesn't care that it's a pink box and it's he in a different care that aisle. The figures are four feet tall compared to like <laughs> our classic little Lego man. <laughs> bricks are the, bricks, right? That's all. The, the yeah, bricks are bricks. The last photo I have. This is this is the one that um, I wanted to spotlight him because of, and it's what you said earlier, Matt. The immersion. Yeah. The immersion. A lot of his photos. In fact, I think I've, I've wrote it here, so what did I write? I said, I really love your framing. None of the shots show any sort of background outside of the Lego City. Total immersion. So this is, um, I think that's Down Under Brick. And uh, I don't know if that's somebody in particular or just a foreman or my, my apologies. City inspector. I, I, do, I do know Down Under Brick is a YouTuber. Oh, Instagram yeah. And all that. So that, that's a person. Uh, yeah, because it's right there in the description as well. Bam. Boil. Um, so this shot, unless this brown in the top right corner is something in the background and not Lego, there's nothing in this shot that's outside of within the city, except for maybe this bin full of tan uh, tiles. <laughs> it's right all here. falling apart, Chris. We're so fine doing uh, no. <laughs> Zoom in, zoom in. Un untiled studs over here. No! <laughs> uh, anyway, I, I really like his yeah, framing and right. maybe it's just because he builds big but i think some thought had to go into how he angled the camera for this one so that it's like you're in the lego city there's there's no um there's no chair or tv in the background right yeah one day i dream of having the display case uh, this display space where i can do something like this and just have the the full city out so i can finally do that at the moment it's just I have shelves with, with sets built, but that you can see the shelf behind it and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So going out of our uh, spotlight here on Charm City Brick, uh, give them a like for sure and go check them out at uh, conventions in awesome. and around Maryland. Awesome. I don't know if he's going to be at BrickFest Live this weekend. Oh, final thing to shout out. On, on this telephone pole here on the top, these bars at the top, I don't know if you guys know what these are. I don't. Baseball bats? These, no, these bars at the top here, which are, there's two of them, it looks like, on each telephone pole. These are the bars that come in the train track four packs. When you buy a set with Lego train track, there's four tracks stacked with one of these through them. Oh. Just keeps, holding uh, them together. Yeah, it's one of these with I think there's something on the bottom that like. So it's like, not even a legitimate Lego piece. It's no, just it, like a, it's a sprue. Yeah, awesome. yeah. <laughs> so these are sprues from Lego train tracks. So nice. Bam, knowledge. Uh, we're gonna go next into one of our topics, that being <laughs> da, 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 the Taj Mahal. Because how could we not talk about it? It just came out. Oh, I, thought Look at this, that. I thought this set came out already. So <laughs> this is a nearly 100% remake of a Lego sculptures set by the same name from a few years back. It's been said that this set features one extra part to the part count. 
It is, in <laughs> fact, the brick separator. Oh, there it is. Oh, I was, oh, when I heard that, I was like, okay, so it'll come with, like, the architecture sets of a little plaque or a little tile with the name of it printed on it. It'll come with something that says Taj Mahal. You just put nope. that right on the front. <laughs> brick separator. Nope. It's a brick separator. Because we an don't have enough of those. An orange one, of course. It's not even a cool green one. It's an orange one. So this set's pretty big. I see it's almost 6,000 pieces. Yes. Yeah. If, up until the, the, the UCS Falcon, the new one, I think this was the biggest set that they'd made. Right. I think so. The um, I know the Disney castle, because it's sitting here right in front of me, is 4080. So that's... A third Always less than this thing. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, this is sort of, I mean, it's in the creator line. It's sort of on par with like the Big Ben and the London Bridge and the Sydney Opera House, the this, this sort of real life buildings built in some sort of scale, whether it's Lego City scale or not. Yeah, it's the, it's the kind of sets that are like, you, you build this for the love of the design and for the love of just getting of accuracy, I guess is probably the best way to put it, because they can they could have used probably a third less a third fewer bricks by using larger bricks, but I think in order to get the texture right and in order the to intricacy, yeah, things, for sure. You got that. That's very interesting. We'll get we'll get into that for sure. We're gonna we're gonna run through these little photos and then we'll um we'll uh we'll each show our our opinions on it from different perspectives. So here's the um the back of the box. Shows you kind of like um, like the in hand versus the render, even though that's pretty much just a real thing anyway. That's more on top, which it's it's true to the original. I mean, the it was blue base plates that are completely covered in the turntable bottoms. That's oh, what this yeah. is. Looks like lace. It does, and it's sitting on a doily. <laughs> <laughs> There's a that's the back. No, that's the front. I don't know. I think maybe it's the same on all sides. <laughs> don't spin it around. You'll forget which side's the front. <laughs> Without that nameplate, you will. <laughs> there is no nameplate. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, as that it looks like a lot of those, like uh, those uh, the groove bricks. Yeah, a nice little detail inside there. Eh? One of the things I like there's so it kind of comes. Oh, so the base plates are only the. They're only the 16 by 32s, and they're only around the outside. Although there might be just something on the. And do you the see how they use the uh, the spinner brick holders there on the bottom, on the uh, the outer that, edge? That's, yeah, the turntable bottoms. That's turntable bottoms, yeah. Um, actually, it looks like it might have eight of these half base plates. There's six around the outside, and if there's two more on the middle, that's yeah. eight of those in blue, which is a pretty good number. It's a big set. Looks great from the top. That's, That's really how you cool. want to display it right oh, there. Wow. That looks really cool, though. <laughs> yeah. Glue it and mount it to the wall. Just like right that. to the and wall. Yeah. A totally different perspective. You're like, what is that? It's Taj Mahal. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one of my favorites is um, around the outside, they use the headlight bricks back to back for just a little bit more texture in these slits or whatever they are down here, where it goes in just a little bit more from the cutout from the headlight. Yeah, break. yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. All right, so that's the photos. Yeah, I, and I think these sets are really cool because they sort of, aside from giving you an interesting build, it also uh, might expose people to a different culture. Uh, I mean, this, you know, I, I'm sure they go as far to educate people a bit on what the building is. And why don't we? I mean, this thing was... Uh, the Taj Mahal was commissioned to be built in the 1630s uh, by a emperor in the city of Agra, India. Um, Shah Jahad, I think his name was, and it was a—it's not a, in fact like a palace, but it's a mausoleum for his dead wife, which I think is very cool. Yeah. Little little facts for you. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't see that coming. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm looking. Yeah. I'm looking on. Um, uh, on Bricklink at the old one, and in fact, yes, it is one piece shy of this one. It's 59.22. The original came out 101.89, which is actually one number above the first first uh, Death Star, which is 101.88. But it came out in 2008, which it's, I think that's the same year as the um, Death Star came out. But the point, when you guys are talking about the intricacy of this build, the point I wanted to make was 
there are no Lego technological advancements to this set since 2008. This is a 2008 build being put so, out in so it's, it's, a literal, it's a literal dinosaur. It's probably got hundreds of pieces that could have been used but weren't. In, yes. Yeah. Like, I don't know that there was the cheese slope yet in 2008. God. <laughs> the cheese slope. The history of the cheese. We could talk about the history of the real Taj Mahal, but let's talk about the history of the cheese slope instead. I'm I'm zooming. Oh no, cheese slope. There we go. Yeah, uh, and, there's, there's... and and what's the set retailing for? Um that is just a couple clicks away. 50 ish somewhere I... around there. Sorry? I think maybe three fifty ish. Three fifty. A little cheaper than an actual Taj Mahal. <laughs> But I might be wrong, too. It might be more than that. But I don't think actual Taj Mahal prices. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm just checking out the uh, the Brick Fan, which is where you should go. It's uh, 370. 370. 370. 369.99. That's right. And it'll be available on Cyber Monday, November 27th. I wonder if this is the first time uh, that they have put out a set releasing on Cyber Monday on purpose. I don't know. Who's buying it? Are you guys uh, buying it? Nope. I am not, no. I'm not buying it either. It, oh. I'm sure there's a market out there for it somewhere. Oh, Obviously. It's up your alley. Well, yeah. No. The, the thing is, this this was on the, on the tail end of its release when I first started getting back into Lego. So I remember seeing it in the store uh, on the display and all that kind of stuff. And it's impressive, but it's a lot of it's a lot of white bricks and it just wasn't that interesting looking and i have no real tie to the the, the building itself and because it's such a big set i have nowhere to put it either so kind of the combination of all those things kind of put it out of uh, out of uh my out of your mind yeah yeah like I, I i would rather save up for the uh the ucs falcon just because even though I would worry, I would worry about the the display space and and there's a lot of gray bricks in that. There's, I have much more of a tie to Star Wars than I do the the Taj Mahal. I'd rather <laughs> have that. You mean you don't have much connection to a thirty two billion rupee grave <laughs> <laughs> for some rich guy's wife? Ah, well, let's whatever. be honest. Paul doesn't want it because it doesn't come with any mini figures. Yeah. No <laughs> mini figures. Maybe it should come with one buried under it. <laughs> yeah, it needs more minifigures and it needs to be a little bit more narrow so I could put it up on the shelf with all the rest of the uh, architecture sets. The, uh, yeah, just, like only build it halfway back and then just stop because it's against the wall. Yeah, I mean, it's an ex it. it's an expensive shop, but you could put the little uh, Lego passport guy with his selfie stick in front of it, <laughs> taking selfies. That is pretty brilliant. <laughs> that would be a good one. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know that this is going to sell out immediately and then be on back order for months and potentially miss Christmas like um like the Falcon is. Oh yeah. Have you just by the way, did you guys get uh the holiday catalog in? Like I find it very interesting that I did not see the UCS Falcon in here. So I assume it's not uh, I got I got a catalog a couple of weeks ago. It wasn't the holiday catalog, but it did have the Falcon in it, strangely enough. That's interesting. I don't I don't I'm not allowed to get the the catalogs. <laughs> Yeah, you're you're just the worst kind of person, you know. It's like they don't need you. Now, now, Chris, being that that you sell these, and this has probably got a ton of, I'd assume, good parts that are just a lot of parts in general to fill up your bins to sell. What, is there any interest in from a from like a resale standpoint for you? Um, so let's see. It was one of the see. What's what's the park count nearly six thousand so it's good the price per piece is good to buy it um honestly this is there's so many angles we could do this at this is one of the first times that you can look at the part out value of a set that's not even out yet because it's the same set as an older set <laughs> that's true so i can run that number real quick <laughs> Look and, at this and guy. He's such plus a one brick separator. Yeah. 109. What's a brick separator worth? Two bucks? 
I don't even sell them. I just stash them up. And when I have like 500 of them, I, I put it up as a lot. Okay. So the part I value is $1,007 and 14 cents. God. All right. <laughs> I'll buy one and ship it to you for a, uh, you can do it's, it. It's up. also, um, give me a hundred extra bucks for it. <laughs> so the problem is, man, there's just so much to say about this. Um, there's when the first one came pieces. out, it was unnumbered bags. So that means you had to open every bag and dump them out before you could start building. Unlike now where they walk you, they hold your hand and walk you through the whole thing. Open bag number one now, Matt. Okay. <laughs> so it was unnumbered bags. You guys probably think the number of bags are great. I don't have all this extra stuff in front of me, especially with a big ass set. I feel so attacked. <laughs> you asked me to be on this show and now it's like I bet you like numbered bag it's like yeah okay I like numbered bag what about so, it so here's why I don't <laughs> like numbered oh, bags I, I need I need to just focus on the, the little bits at a time <laughs> I don't have the space or the time here's why I don't like numbered bags oh numbered there's bags. a picture of bag number seven <laughs> bag number seven shout out to bag number seven from the uh, old fishing hut um, this is a good bag <laughs> My favorite when I, I buy sets, I open them, and I sort out the parts, and I put the parts in my store. That's how parting out works. If you have numbered bags, there's a chance that you have the same pieces in multiple bags. In fact, I'm sure you have black Technic friction pins in every one of the bags. That means you have to go back to the same sorting containers every time you open a new bag or just dump out the whole thing with unnumbered bags no and no single part is in more than one of those bags it's just not how they pack them oh i didn't remember so that means wow. you can take all of they're not numbered but all the bags that look like this bag so let's just call it bag one bag a call it bag a you'd rather you letter take, bags i see how it is <laughs> yeah you can take all of bag a and pour them out together and then you know everything there is the same and none of those parts are going to get in any of the other bags. So once you're done sorting those bags, move them out of the way. You're done with them until you're all ready to put the parts in your store. This sounds like a reseller issue. This sounds like an issue that you would never <laughs> encounter. But yeah. this, so the old one was not numbered. This one is numbered. But I bring that up because it's interesting. It only has 164 lots which is very low for a set that's nearly 6,000 pieces. So it's high quantity, low variety, which is very good for part out. So, I mean, $1,000 in part out, it's, it sounds like a good move. But it's like a lot of those are white bricks. It's like you got to look the white, at the, the climate. The, the white so. turntable bases are and have been for a while on the pick a brick wall at the Lego store as well. Yeah. They must have been ramping up production for that for a that, year. That's just something you get <laughs> to like put your face against the window and see what's at the pick a brick wall. You don't get to go in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, take a series of photos of me looking uh, solemn Sad, outside the Lego Sadly store. through. <laughs> <laughs> a picture of like a, my face on the inside of the store. I, I don't bet you could get in on Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> I can buy anything I want from Lego stores. I just can't place orders online. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and you can't collect Lego VIP points. No, I can. In the store. And I can spend <laughs> in, them in the store. See, the closest Lego store to me is not a Lego store. It's a Lego land. And so they don't even oh, yeah. give me Lego VIP points. They give me a 5% discount, which I guess is the same thing. But you so they, yeah, they, you can't use but I also can't there, spend there. my points there. Which yeah. Ooh, me. yeah. They, um, they opened a Discovery Center, which is what you're talking about, near me. I haven't been there yet. They opened it in March, and I haven't, I haven't gone yet because I've been, I've been to the one in Chicago, so uh, you know they're all the same. But... They do their pick a brick by weight and not by cup. Nice. And I found out today, which I think I already knew, but I just dismissed it. If you're a season pass holder for the Discovery Center, you get 20% off everything. Just That's blanket. That's mental. Interesting. Yeah, right? That's like a, I don't even need to try anymore. I'm just going to buy all my Lego here. 
Yeah. Price. Jeez. That's, yeah, that's holiday pricing kind of a thing. That's awesome. Damn. So uh, is Paul going to show us a, a cool Lego idea that he found? Yeah. Not, I not before that. we talk about some architecture, maybe. Oh, God. Are we talking <laughs> about architecture? <laughs> well, I suppose while we're talking about the Taj, it's probably a, a good point to, to kind of go with it. And, and yeah, as you can see, if you're watching on video, there's, I have the full run of the architecture set all on display behind me. And no big deal. <laughs> the reason that I like that I like that series and that line so much is even though I love all the the play features of the modulars and I and and all the the Lego Batman sets and all that kind of stuff, these are ones that I can actually like leave out on display and it still looks kind of classy. Like when I have my 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 Poe Dameron X Wing fighter, which a black X Wing fighter is totally badass. When the I Halloween X Wing, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I have that on a shelf, it 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 draws a, a certain kind of attention. Whereas these are like Wow, that's really cool. That that uh, how does where did you get that or what is that? Oh, it's actually it's just Lego. And then, oh my gosh, is that the is that the Farnsworth house or whatever? It always ends up drawing some sort of some conversation, and and I enjoy that. I like the fact that it seems a little bit classy as far as Lego goes. So even though it's a child's toy, through and through, it seems to get uh, it seems to get a pass from most jaded adults that come in and look at me funny when they see all my children. That's funny. I, I bought a new washing machine and when the guys were installing it, they were in my basement and the guy is like installing, he's messing around with this big thing and he's like, shit, is that all Lego? <laughs> sees my city. <laughs> shit, is that all Lego? Is that what Legos are now? <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's what Legos are now. Yeah, it's kind of funny. My, my wife likes the line too, so that's kind of one of the reasons why these are okay to display. And so right we're kind of working on ways to to kind of display certain ones and then what, what i actually ended up also getting this week i got a shadow box which is actually going to be um these are more for the skyline sets because it'll kind of line up pretty well in there and i think likely we're going to put maybe a picture of the chicago skyline in the background for that one and then the new york skyline in the back of the new york one so um, just looking for different ways that we can display these. And, and because they're relatively small and kind of thin, so like the Chicago one is, is really only that thick, um, we can hang these up on a wall and it's fine and it looks cool it kind of as a piece of wall art, um, again, as opposed to the, the, the shuttle Tiderium or the Imperial shuttle. You can't really hang that from the wall very well, maybe from the ceiling, but I don't know how well that's going to go yeah, with the guests and things like that. <laughs> That's yeah, a good cool. idea. Um, I it's mean, gotta I... Sorry, go man. ahead. It's got to. It's got to be the black boxes, right? That's that's what makes it classy. The all black uh, architecture. <laughs> yeah, box. I do it appreciate with, those. Uh, it goes with the rest of our decor, so it works out pretty well. There was initially, um, like the big one amongst the architecture kind of community was um, there was an IKEA one that was a white one, and so we're like, it doesn't really go, but those are pretty cool, and it doesn't. It didn't really fit all of them well enough. That you'd have to kind of do some modding in order to make them fit but uh, when we found out about these at, at michael's oddly enough um that these will actually fit the size that you need that we needed and all that kind of stuff it was a no-brainer mm -hmm. we're, we're gonna this and is plus i mean if anybody else is going to do this do this pro tip for michael's just go online on your phone and pull up the coupon you're always going to get 40 percent off 50 percent off one item I, and you just go in grab one shadow box you can walk right back in the store 10 minutes later with the same coupon and grab another one. And so anyone else looking to go that route can uh, save a lot of money uh, yeah, shopping. Yeah, it's well there. worth it. Take, take that screenshot and leave it on your phone for a while. <laughs> you know, it'll come in handy. Did you get, Paul, the um, the Architecture Studio set? Or was that just no, not necessary? I, I got that one too. Uh, more, again, just because we really enjoyed the line. So we, we got the Architecture Studio, especially once it like sold out. We were scr I was scrambling to get it. It wasn't initially uh, kind of front of mind, but once it sold out, I the collector in me had to get it, and so I got it. And then, um, like I got Adam Reed Tucker to to sign the book and all that because that was one of the later things that he collaborated on before he left Lego. And so um, all those kind of things like that, it, it it has it has some meaning to me at least. The, the the book itself is a really cool kind of coffee table book to have um, more from a technical Lego standpoint as opposed to these are these are all the things that you can build. It also kind of goes into it. So if anybody did kind of come over and flip through that, they can see kind of some of the thoughts behind some of the build and how you can 
try to do a micro build of certain things and stuff like that. It's just it's just cool to have. Right. I don't and know if I've ever seen the, for, the book for me, I, I I'm unfamiliar with that sentence, so I just pulled it up here. I guess it's like uh, as if it's like an architectural model of some kind. It uh, allows you to basically build. It, it comes with a stack of white bricks, basically. Um, yeah. A big variety of them, so you can build what you want. And then there's a very, a, a fairly substantial book that is included with it that kind of shows it has some, some instructions on on how to do some builds, but more it's more to kind of teach you themes and to kind of get you into the building and in that mind space so that you can then and playing with the, the 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 altered scale of, a, of the architecture line uh, yeah, versus exactly. the regular being, being that it's not really it, it's not an obvious play feature with the architecture line in general but that that is to kind of generate more um kind of creativity in, in the building it was kind of uh to be a, a master builder before the lego movie coined that term kind of a thing right yeah i mean it's a different way to look at things i mean building primarily with clear and white bricks versus you know the colorful array of lego uh you know that's pretty cool i could yeah, get and behind then, that and then ironically i'm not crazy about the taj mahal which is all white bricks as well so it's, <laughs> but it's different it's different <laughs> i might have to get that book actually because that that looks pretty interesting and i'm into the lego books I, i'm into like the lego lifestyle <laughs> I, I'm not into the mocks or building or collecting or I, I don't want to say I'm into the books. I'm into the lifestyle. So I don't buy all the like, oh, you, you, you're into the, the Lego phenomenon. There's one more than there was last year. Star Wars. I'm not Star into Wars. the books. I'm, I'm into the art and the lifestyle. Sure. Yeah. I appreciate Live that. Live that Lego life. Yeah. I, I, I get it. <laughs> so yeah, I might I might get that book if uh if it's not like as much as the whole box. I didn't know there was a book in there. I guess it makes sense, but I didn't I didn't know that was in there because I've seen those things tons of times because they didn't go on sale very often and that part out value was never more than the cost of the set. So I, it was wasn't on my radar ever. Yeah, for for us it's it's all about the book with that one. That was the the main draw to it. Um, cool. And, and I think it's well worth it for the book, but. Again, if you can get it for just the book price, definitely do that. Yeah, Paul, what uh, what's your what was your favorite build of all the architecture sets behind you? Ooh, um, I have to put you on the spot. I'd say I I did like falling water quite a bit, um, but I think part of that was because of at the time it was like the most expensive set I had bought, and it was it was I think it was already discontinued. Eh, I don't know about discontinued, but really hard to get. So at the time it was that one, but. Um, I was very fortunate that this is the uh, Roby House. Yeah. Roby House, exactly. And this is in Chicago, and I live in Chicago. And they had a Lego event there, and it was kind of the unveiling of the Roby House, and it was the first place that you could buy it was literally there. And um, that was uh, my wife and I went, and we got the chance to meet Adam Reed Tucker for the first time there. So again, the the, the designer of this set specifically, and we were totally geeking out and, and like fanboying out about, about like getting to meet a Lego designer and all that kind of stuff. And we thought that it was going to be packed and there'd be this huge line and maybe he'll, he'll be nice enough to sign one of our books. As it turns out, as we probably should have expected, it was all kids and their, and their parents, and they don't give a shit about who Adam Reed Tucker is. So he actually <laughs> sat and talked to us for a good hour while he was just kind of free building a huge model of it. And he signed all of our instruction booklets. He, he gave us a little bit of insight as to kind of how he goes through his process and how, what, what kind of designs he submitted and then Lego coming back and saying, well, for the, the Sears Tower set that you have is great, but it's huge. What we want is we want something that's going to be good for the gift shop. So someone can just see it, walk by it and pick that up. So something more in the $20 price range as opposed to the $120 price range. So that's why the Sears Tower set is actually a really small set. It's maybe like 100 pieces, if that. And... Um, that's the, that's what they wanted, and even though I wanted something bigger, like I get it now. I was he, he kind of clued me in as to kind of how it's obviously it's a business for Lego. It's the and, business, yeah. And it's a, a very good one and a lucrative one for that line, and so I get it. So things like the uh, the Korean set, the the Sun Ye Moon like gate set, like they 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 made that one for um, like an anniversary uh, event they had in Korea at the time. So uh, just to kind of see the the different kind of aspect of things and really a different way of thinking about stuff. It, it, it cleared a lot of things up and just kind of clued me in on a whole new side of things. 
How was, severe was Adam's haircut when you met him? <laughs> when I first met him, it wasn't nearly like it is now. Or it has, over the years, gone more and more mohawky and more shaved. And uh, <laughs> it, he had more hair the first time I met him. I'll, I'll just say that. It's right like, now, it, it, it only <laughs> is this much. Like, only right here. Yeah. <laughs> the front and center, and that's it. So it's like, like, a, like it's like a unicorn horn. He, yeah, he's like reverse balding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> reverse yeah, reverse balding. <laughs> yeah, I will. I, let me just say, by the way, whenever when when we first kind of got together to to see if we can do this podcast, I, I felt very follicularly challenged because I've got one guy with this huge locks of hair and one guy with this nice big bushy beard, and I got I can't grow facial hair because I'm Asian and I'm balding on the top because I'm getting old. So I got nothing there. <laughs> Follically challenged. It's all good. <laughs> okay, you have all the architecture sets. You have uh, you have the yeah. um, Marina Bay Sands. So that's true. You rank right, higher than right us. There in the corner. That's it. Probably the most my the one that I that I value the most only because it is so highly valued. Um, not my favorite, but definitely it, it as a collector. That's always in the back of my head is that, man, that thing's worth a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, Matt, it's only sold at the location. Oh, there you go. It's and the, he also has one thing it. that we don't have in a, a class. You got class. <laughs> we're we're like smart. school in the summertime, man. <laughs> no class. <laughs> <laughs> no, only this part of the collection is classy. Everything else is not. And that's why it's not on display. <laughs> Yeah, those those sets appreciate very very quickly. Like there, the um even the little Sydney Opera House is over a hundred dollars now. It's it's insane. Crazy. What are your thoughts on that? You just I've I've always been curious because at their essence they're just bricks, right? And like I actually have, again, even though I'm a collector, I and, and that is always in the back of my head is is the value of things. It does kind of bug me that Lego sets appreciate and value so much because. It's all the same brick, just I don't know why specific combination of those bricks all of a sudden demand thousands of dollars when I can get the same combination of bricks somewhere else. Like I think I think me. it's like maybe just adding the term retired product to to geeky people. It's like, uh <laughs> retired. <laughs> that means never. <laughs> and they just lose their minds and throw wads of money at it. I mean, you know. Yeah. And, and I, I, fall, I fall into that that trap a lot of times. I certainly think about it every time I see that I think the UCS Tie Fighter is going to be the next one to go. Like, should I pick up a bunch of them? You know, because those tend to go up a lot of money. But just but the then you of- also have to look at the fact that I mean, most of it's selling on eBay, and most of it's sorry, selling is not the right term. <laughs> sitting sitting on eBay at those prices, and they're not selling; they're just sitting there. And one might sell when somebody like breaks down and gets a tax return or like wife leaves them or some shit and he's like oh uh, i'll just buy the green grocer for eight hundred dollars it's retired product what if my if my wife ever left me what the hell would i spend i would buy so much like oh if that were the case i'll just build a new wife <laughs> um so i i've never looked at the architecture sets from a business standpoint uh, for as far as parting out goes, because you're right, they're just they're just bricks, and they're very overpriced because of the package deal you get. Yeah. And like the the Sears Tower and the Willis Tower, or the um, Empire State Building, some of the the early ones, uh, the John Hancock Center, they they're like four dollars in parts <laughs> because there's not many parts, and they're all very basic. The most expensive part in almost any, if not any, architecture set is the printed tile with the name yeah. of the building on it. Yeah, so here's the Sears Tower. It's it's tiny. Like, it's it's nothing. Look at you, Godzilla. <laughs> and yes, King for the record, it's definitely Sears Tower, because, I'm again, I'm from Chicago, so I won't get the Willis Tower one. <laughs> yeah, Matt, they reissued it as the Willis Tower later on. Oh, because did they rename the building? Yeah. yeah. All right. America, what are you? Doing? America. <laughs> I mean, we rename our hockey arenas a lot. So, how sad and Canadian does that sound? Well, that's just like the company <laughs> that owns the arena, right? Buy, yeah, you know, one bank like, whoever, whatever bank. phone company buys the arena gets to name it. <laughs> it's the Rogers. It's the Samsung Note Two. It blows up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
That'd be great if if uh, Samsung owned owned something big and they just they renamed it, it every the time they put out a new version. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's the it's the the Apple iPhone X Arena. Memo- <laughs> yeah, this the iPhone 4S Memorial Hockey Arena. Uh, the other the other thing <laughs> with the um the uh, me looking at the architecture sets on a business standpoint is that. I think that's why selling pieces individually is such a big industry because like you said, it is just pieces in there and certain combinations gain an additional value beyond the component pieces. And what I'm doing is I'm just making combinations that people want available, whether it's a mock they're building or a set they're putting back together or a set that they're completing. I'm making the combination they need available, and that you could you could literally be like, oh well, the Sears Tower sells for eighty bucks now. Well, here you can buy the Sears Tower in my brick shop for forty bucks, and people would probably yeah, just doesn't have like here it is. It's ten bucks. It doesn't have the tile that says Sears Tower or Willis Tower, but (laughs) here's all the bricks you need. It's ten bucks. Call it the the budget architecture line. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) You can't see the, the the nameplates on any of these now anyway, so it really makes no difference. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like we can uh, we can push one of our ideas until uh, next week. Yeah, why not? If you want to. Yeah, that works. And uh, we'll just go into our outro, which I, I forget the sequence. But hey, thank you for <laughs> watching us here, listening Nailed to it. us maybe. I don't know if anyone uh, inside the realm is going to consider this eligible for an audio version, but thank you for watching this on a, on a Friday, which is when you'll probably be watching this. And we'll be back next week with more news and topics and updates about our, our Lego lives. And now I'm supposed to do a thing with the screen share. Oh, you're hey, killing hey, it, hey, man. Hey, look at hey, that. Look at that cool thing. Oh, stuff. man. But you got it uh, now. You got to click on it so it doesn't change when we talk, and we just talk over this. And this huge. is just—it's going to happen every week. Look at that going into itself. We're here. We're there. We're there. We're there. We did it. Oh so, yeah, man, uh, very good. Hey, look at that mystery oh, science yeah, theater three thousand style, and just be like, <laughs> why does Paul have two usernames? <laughs> oh, here's this guy. One's for Facebook. Uh, I so mean, both for Instagram, to be honest. So I, I, I tend to fluctuate. <laughs> it's glorious. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hit the wrong button. Oh. I meant to.